Danganronpa Killer Killer is the worst thing I've ever read. I wanted to get through all of the extra material for Danganronpa and Killer Killer was in the forefront. After the main games in DR3, next on the list is usually always DR0. While I find some parts of DR0 to be interesting, ultimately it was hard for me to get through. Reading it felt like a chore and after reading it about halfway through, I just ended up reading a summary. This was actually common for me, despite being a fan of visual novels, I'm not much of a reader. It's quite easy for me to get through visual novels but for some reason there are many books that I just can't get through. So Danganronpa Zero didn't go as planned, but thankfully next on the list was Killer Killer. It was a 14 chapter manga so it would be quite easy to get through. So I did that, I read all 14 chapters, and by the end, I was left speechless after what I just read. Killer Killer is a spin-off and is canon to the Hope's Peak universe. It follows two protagonists. First we have Misaki Asano, who's a girl that's new to the Future Foundation and is working as an investigator. She gets assigned to do investigation work with our other protagonist, Takumi Hijirihara. Now the first few pages of this manga was pretty good. It had a comical tone that I really liked, Asano was overreacting to everything, and Takumi was an oddball that hid in confined spaces for seemingly no reason. They get some case about some monk idol that gets a death threat so their role is to guard the monk. Okay so we got a fun duo of characters and now we get to solve some mysteries. I was on board with this. Then we get to the part where Takumi meets the idol and Takumi deduces that the idol was the person who killed everyone and made the Buddha statues out of corpses. So, so this was the point where I was expecting some mind-blowing deduction sequence because I had no idea how he figured this out. Do you want to know what the answer is? He figured out the idol was the killer because when it comes to abnormal crimes like murder, he loves them more than anything. I'm not joking. That's his reasoning on how he deduced the killer. So Takumi figures out that the idol wanted to drink the blood of the people he killed to keep his skin beautiful, and then the idol freaks out and just confesses he's the killer. I think you guys can already see how stupid this whole thing sounds, but let's just keep going. Takumi tells the idol that his murder is crap and isn't passionate killing, so the idol freaks out and makes these really disturbing faces. He tries to kill Takumi, but Takumi kills him instead. This is Killer Killer. Do you like mysteries? Well, there aren't really any mysteries here because there's nothing to figure out. Takumi just says he knows everything because apparently he knows passionate killings. There's no proof but the culprit goes insane every time and that's that. Every chapter is similar to this first one, but it gets a lot worse. Remember when I said that this is canon? Well, it is. There are many characters from Danganronpa 3 who appear here and we even get to see images of the DR1 and DR2 casts. This is where the world building and logic just takes an insane leap. It really feels like anything can happen in the world of Killer Killer. You get the craziest and most unrealistic fighting scenes and all logic goes out the window. I mean I think that one moment in the end summarizes it all. You guys know what I'm talking about. When Asano's- <laughs> When Asano- <laughs> Oh no. Oh no, this is gonna be hard to say. When Asano- <laughs> When Asano's head gets chopped off and it just magically connects back to her body, which means the bracelet recognizes she was dead but she's actually alive. Like what's going on? This was a huge problem I remember having in Danganronpa 3 as well. It's been years since I watched Danganronpa 3 but I remember it feeling like anything could happen in the universe. It felt like there were no boundaries to the world, logic just didn't exist. This made it feel like there were no stakes in the world. If someone dies, the creators could just invent something to save that person. If we need something to happen, just make it happen out of sheer coincidence. Now I'm not saying prior entries didn't have stuff like this as well, but I feel like the 2016 entries peaked in terms of broken logic and bad world building. But fine, what about the characters? I did say I like the protagonists, and the manga has DR3 characters, so how good are they? Well, the DR3 characters don't really get any depth to them in the spin-off, so if you want to read this thinking it may improve your views on the DR3 characters, you're out of luck. They barely get any screen time anyway, so let's talk about the protagonists. 
I quickly started losing my fondness for Takumi. The guy basically just started loving killing after he got a quick glimpse of Mukuro killing someone, despite him being scared of blood prior to that. A psychopath killer doesn't necessarily equal bad in my opinion, but there's really nothing interesting done with Takumi. As I'm writing this, I literally can't think of what to say about him. I think his character suffers a lot because of the cast around him. A lot of the time, he's just talking to other crazy killers. This doesn't really offer any interesting dynamic. At least with someone like Junko, you get to see her talk to people who can't stand killings, and you get to see how they can't comprehend her at all. You get to see how Junko affects the people around her, and I think that's a lot better than what's done with Takumi. Even his dynamic with Asano didn't feel like it went anywhere. Well actually it did, but we'll get to that right now. So what about Asano? Did I still like her? Well, I was actually growing fond of Asano. I liked her comedic reactions to the world surrounding her, and her moments of distrust towards Takumi. Well, you know, I did like her, until they started doing the whole romance plot. I don't even know how this happens. How do you go from being a fairly normal girl, to doing this lover suicide thing at the end? The romance was not built up well at all, and it seemed unrealistic that she would end up the way she did. It's like her character just changed for no reason midway through the story. I don't have much to say about the villain either. Like, I read the entire thing today, but my head is mostly empty when I think about Takumi and his friend. I just didn't care about their characters at all. So that's Killer Killer. If I'd had to rate it, I'd probably give it a 2 out of 10. So yeah, that's that. See you guys for the next video.